Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Mikado Proving Grounds. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about how to set up the new V-Plane software for Mikado. So when you go to set up your model for the first time, it takes you through what we call the setup wizard. Now this just takes you through step by step as you adjust all their endpoints and centering for all your servos on the plane. So I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on that, or any time on that, because it's just super easy to do. But what I'm going to be talking to you about is how you set up uh, and adjust all the parameters for as far as flying performance goes because that's where it can get a little tricky. So the default setup for the V-Plane software comes with three banks uh, pre-programmed with varying amounts of uh, gyros. So the first bank, zero, is no gyros and then there's one bank with a little bit of gyros and then another bank that has a lot more. So what we recommend is starting in that middle bank because for any normal model that'll work just fine and then you can fine tune off of that. So when you get your model in the air for the first time, one of the first things you need to do obviously is trim it. So V-Bar has a real neat feature for this, simply called auto trim. So basically to set that up, all you're gonna do is go in the radio to the auto trim tab and you just simply assign a switch that you want to activate this auto trim. So then you just get the model in the air and um, just flick that switch and if the model has a tendency to go down, it's going to recognize that and then it'll correct itself. So basically trimming takes about half a pass. I mean you can take off and just flick that switch and it's just going to level it right out. So it's a really neat feature. So after that then we can start going into uh, adjusting more of the other parameters which I'll go into next. So one of the first things you want to make sure you adjust is what's called the throttle to gain reduction. So you're going to go into the setup pages and under the throttle tab you'll see the throttle expert tab. So you go in there and you'll find the adjustment for the throttle to gain reduction. So what this does is as you give an amount of throttle the plane is going to go faster and the surfaces will become more responsive. So what it does is it dials the gain back as you give throttle. So on a 3D plane like this where you're going to be flying at a lot of slow speed as well as high speed for this uh, value, you're going to run a little bit higher because there's going to be a greater difference between slow speed and high speed. But then on something like a trainer where it's pretty much flying slow the whole time or a jet even where it's pretty much flying fast the whole time, this value you're going to set it uh, lower. So, But if it's set too low, then when you're at high speed, the gains will be excessively high and you'll get strike back or whatever. And then if you set this value too high, the problem you can get into is You'll be coming out of a dive and uh, or something and you bring the throttle back right away it's gonna bring the gains up actually when you do that and if you have too much speed it'll get uh, into an oscillation so you want to make sure you set this value kind of in that range <clears throat> for most 3d planes i run about 40 and then on most trainers or jets i'm at about 20. so that's the first thing you want to make sure you set correctly before you start adjusting gains and everything on all the other channels so once you got that set up, we're going to go into setting up all the other values for all the different axes, aileron, elevator, and then rudder. So for each axis, you have six parameters that you can adjust. First is expo, which everybody knows what that is. Then there's the gain, which this has to do with the stopping behavior uh, of the model. And then also it uh, deals with if there's wind and it bounces the model, how much it takes to correct to get it back. That's where you set that gain. And then there's your agility, which is pretty much like your dual rate. It just sets the rate that you want, if you want more or less aileron or something like that. Then you scroll into the expert menus, and there's three values there. One's called locking, which is the heading hold function of the model. So it's what's going to keep it perfectly in trim, or if you're doing knife edge passes, what keeps it on a perfect line, stuff like that. The balance. It's kind of a tricky uh, adjustment. It has to do with the actual the PID loop speed. So <clears throat> if you get some strike back in certain orientations, you can adjust this value. And then the integral, it has to do with the heading hold too, but 
unless you're going to be trying to do like auto hover modes, you pretty much aren't going to mess with that uh, value. But I'll go through uh, all of these adjustments individually for each axis and explain more what I do to set them up and what to look for and things like that. So when I'm setting up a model for the first time, I usually start by adjusting all the parameters on the aileron axis. So I'm just going to talk about the gain, locking, and balance because those are the three values that are going to make the biggest difference. So the gain, obviously if you're flying along and the model is just oscillating on the aileron axis, then that means that gain's too high. So dial that back down. And then if it's not oscillating, what you want to do to try and see if you have the right value here is do some point rolls. And if the model's striking back a lot on those, <clears throat> when you're doing like full stick input point rolls, that means you need to lower that gain too. Or if it's kind of not stopping very aggressively or overshooting, that's where you're going to add some more gain. So then I go in and I set the locking. So this is the heading hold uh, function of the gyro system. So basically with this value, I only use as much as I need. So my test for this is I do a knife edge loops. So normally on a model, when you're doing knife edge, it's going to want to fall over or whatever. You, I set this value so that it keeps it nice and straight. <clears throat> if you run too much, you can get a little bit of a robotic feeling or you'll be fighting strike back the whole time or things like this. So I only use about as much as I need. Now the next value is the balance. Now like I said before, this one can be a little tricky to adjust. It kind of depends from model to model. Basically, if you have an airplane with a very active aileron, so a, lot, a big aileron like on a 3D plane, you can get into so that when you give fine inputs, not big inputs like point rolls, but just fine inputs like when you're leveling out, you can see that the model strikes back a little bit on your stops. In this case, you want to take that balance value and raise it up. Now I have seen on other models, like I have a, a carbon cub with, that has basically a small aileron and a big wing. When you come in and do a, go to level out of a turn or something, it would stop and then over rotate. So with this, I took that balance value and lowered it down and it made the stops more aggressive. So those are the three, uh, three values that you're going to adjust for the ailerons. And you kind of, I do them in that order. I set the gain, then the locking, then the balance. And then I go back through and double check to make sure that the locking and balance hasn't affected the gain and such and such and so on. You do that a couple times and it'll set uh, your ailerons up pretty good. So now we'll move on to setting up the elevator axis. So again, we're just going to mess with these three values, the gain, the locking, and the balance. Now for the gain, it's not like on the aileron where you can do point rolls to see uh, if it's striking back because the elevator axis is it's just not going to do that. And then as far as oscillations, I've never gotten the gains up high enough to see an oscillation on the elevator, but obviously if it's doing that, you want to take the gain down. Pretty much what you're going to use to set the, uh, the gain on the elevator is wind correction. So if a wind bubble comes and kicks it up, you want to make sure it just brings it back a little bit. It doesn't overshoot. The model's not constantly bouncing around. Just a nice average gain value. For most 3D planes, I run about 30, or sorry, about 20 or so. And then on more trainer stuff, you can get up there in the 40s or 50s or 60s. It just depends on the model. And then again, like I said on the locking, uh, I only use as much as I need. So I make enough so that when I'm flying level, it's perfectly in trim. And then I roll the model over to inverted and make sure that it flies perfectly inverted, trimmed as well. So you do that. Uh, also, up lines, you make sure that it goes perfectly straight on an up line. And then down lines, make sure it goes down. And then you can also do the knife edge loop test again. Make sure that it's going to keep it on that perfect axis when you're doing your knife edge loops. And like I said before, if you get this locking too high, you'll get into the uh, some strike back or... Um, uh, you'll feel too robotic or stuff like that. So I only use as much as I need. So now we're going to set the balance for the elevator. Now this just varies from model to model depending on the size of the stab or the CG or things like that. So the test I do is always pulling out of a loop because the balance affects right when you're around center and uh, small inputs. So when you're pulling out of loop you're always, always in a small input. So on a big 3D plane that's tail heavy or with a big surface, you'll come and pull out of that loop and it'll tuck back down a little bit. So in that case, just like the ailerons, if you have a strike back, 
you want to raise that balance value up. And then I have seen on, a, I have a, a little pattern plane, foam pattern plane that I fly that's super nose heavy because I'm running a battery too big and the elevator's not very big. So when you pull out of a loop, it would actually keep rotating a little bit. In that case, took the balance value down and it just made the stops perfect. So now that we've got the aileron and the elevator set up like that, your model should be flying pretty good. You know, when you do knife edge loops, go around, do a knife edge loop, you know, whatever on the way down, it should keep it on that perfect line. And then, and the stops and everything should be really good if you followed these steps. So now we're gonna go about setting up the gyros for the rudder axis. Now this is pretty much 100% just personal preference. A lot of guys don't like the gyros on the rudder because they make it, they think it makes it feel unnatural. I like to use a little bit of gyros on the rudder. So basically for the gain, I just set it so that it wind corrects nicely. If a, a bubble of wind comes, it keeps it on a nice line, it corrects it. Then for the locking, I just use as much as I need, like I've always said. Uh, on an upline, it keeps the model perfectly straight, doesn't wander. Downline, same, same thing. Uh, also, when I roll it up to knife edge, I don't want the model to you know, stay, on, stay on knife edge perfectly. That would just feel unnatural to me. But I also don't mind the aid of keeping it up a little bit. So I just run a little bit of locking. A good test for me is I get it going in a, a pretty tight hurricane, a really fast circle, and I do enough there so that when the G's are helping keep the model up, it uh, holds pretty level. <clears throat> so those are really the only the two values that I adjust on the rudder. The balance, there's no real good way of checking it and it doesn't really affect it that much. So, but I, yeah. So with those two values, you can set up the rudder axis and then that pretty much concludes setting up your model. You can always go through and fine tune everything and all the things like that. But if you follow these steps, you should get your model flying pretty closely to, to how you want it. So yeah. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. Uh, if you thought so, give me a thumbs up. And then any comments or suggestions or questions, things like that, just leave them down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode of the Mikado Proving Grounds.